Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Community Forum. My name is Ron Vecchia. Uh, we're here today with our new fire chief. I say new. Uh, Scott has been on the department for many years. How many years is it? Almost 31. Almost 31. Boy, I never saw you there when I was used to hang around, <laughs> but I guess that was more than 30 years ago. But uh, Scott is a uh, newly appointed fire chief of the town of Winthrop. Uh, we thought we'd get together with Scott and talk about, uh, you know, his background, some of the things, that, that the challenges that the fire department faces today in the town of Winthrop, and get into the uh, presentation that was brought uh, to the town council in their fall forum. It's the public safety building, uh, the proposals that are on the drawing board for that. So, Scott, welcome to Community Forum. Thanks for I'm having me. I'm glad you took pleasure. the time to come down here. How are you finding things? It's been a couple of months now. It's been a couple of months. It's a, um, it's a learning process. I, um, probably the most uh, challenging thing for me is time management at this point. I'm still grooming some other members of the department in their new roles and trying to a lot of on-the-job training for me in my new position. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So time management is an issue right now. Yeah. Now, you've been on the department over 30 years. Mm -hmm. And um, we've seen so a lot of changes just in the last couple of years in terms of uh, guys retiring, staff retiring, and so forth. So um, I know that um, there's been a huge turnover of, of, of staff. Mm -hmm. And that is critical, especially in a position of the fire department, where usually you have the, the old timers that are there that you know, help bring in the new guys and show them the ropes you know, uh, physically. Say. Institutional knowledge, Institutional that's the phrase knowledge. that we use yeah. a lot of. That's what we've lost um, a great deal of. A lot of our, what would be mid-level management people have either transferred, moved on, retired. Um, a phrase that I use a lot around the firehouse is I'll say, I'm not to sound like the old man in the room, but you I, am the, <laughs> I am the old man in the room a lot of times, but I'll say to them, um, we look now, we just had to shift some personnel around the department to balance the seniority on some of the shifts. And I look, and it's kind of astonishing for me, to see the senior firefighters on the department are guys with 15 and 16 years on. Mm -hmm. Those are the most senior guys. I have one firefighter who's got 30, came on with me, he's got almost 31 years. And after him, the next senior firefighter is 16 years. Right. So all those guys between 16 and 30 years are no longer with us. But that knowledge left mm -hmm. with them. So right. now, as we try to balance the seniority around the shifts, I look and see two, you know, uh, three, four, five guys combined don't make up 10 years of seniority, yeah. which is a lot. Um, when you say the changes, changes in the fire service and the fire department in general, it's a dramatically different job than it was 30 years ago. And I was thinking about an example of what I could say. Yeah, just, in what respect? Just the fact that you turn on the TV, if, just the fact that the conver there were conversations about autonomous electric, all electric vehicles driving around on the roads should tell you that mm. this is a dramatically different job than it was. Yeah. You know, not only do we respond to car accidents, but we respond to car accidents with hybrid vehicles, combination gas and electric, diesel vehicles, natural gas powered vehicles, completely electric vehicles, yep. any combination of the above. Mm -hmm. um, th there's a lot more to it. The hazardous materials aspect of it, the, um, you know, the, the phrases that they use in the industry is they'll say legacy fires versus new construction fires, lightweight construction. We see projects going up around here, projects going up all over Revere and Chelsea, lightweight construction. It's cheap, goes up really fast. You see All these sticks. buildings, they go up. Yeah. Really dangerous for the fire service, yeah. really dangerous for firefighters. Um, those buildings don't survive in a fire like a typical, traditional, old, 150-year-old building mm -hmm. that was combination brick and heavy timber. Um, so there's uh, not just the personnel issues. There's yeah. A myriad of differences and changes. So, so what happens when when it, when you get a new recruit in? Mm -hmm. um, they pa they pass the civil service test and they get appointed. Uh, they become reserves as, as, as first. We um, the the very first thing we do. So 
we have contractually we have a, a minimum number <coughs> of personnel we have to keep on shift at, at mm -hmm. any given time. Brand new recruits don't count as shift strength, so we don't typically bring them into the fire station until they go to the fire academy. So they'll come in for a couple of weeks just to get some hands-on experience so that they don't go completely blind into the fire academy. So mm -hmm. they'll go, we just had a guy graduate last week. So they'll go to the academy, it's in Stowe, Mass. They'll go for 10 weeks. They start out um, very basic, small fires, a lot of live, burn uh, activity, do a lot of burns. They do natural gas fires, they do uh, hazardous materials, they do first responder. Um, it's a really, really intensive 10 week program. Mm -hmm. They'll graduate from the fire academy, then they come back to us and uh, we have a training officer, we have an assistant training officer, we have a training regiment that we'll put them through. And um, they'll spend the next year on probation. And uh, there's, you know, we'll say there's the fire academy way and then there's the Reality. fire department way. <laughs> but it's different in every city and town. Everybody does things a little bit different. Mm -hmm. Nobody can do it all exactly the same. But uh, they'll come here, they still uh, work uh, a regular shift as soon as they come out of the fire academy and it's an intense year for them. Mm -hmm. um, every, one, every one of our guys is a, an EMT. If they're not, when they first come on the department, within the first year, they're obligated to become an EMT. Um, and it's really baptism by fire. We put yeah. them right to work. Yeah. Yeah. How about equipment? How, how, are we, how are we sitting for equipment? We're in really good shape. Um, the previous administration set us up pretty well. Um, we have one, um, we started purchasing Seagrave fire apparatus a few years ago. We have two really nice Seagrave <coughs> engines one Pierce ladder truck that's a 2007, but it's you know well maintained and still has a lot of life left in it. And we just signed a lease to purchase for another new engine, um, another Seagrave. So we'll have three. Mm -hmm. The oldest one uh, we'll put in reserve as our spare piece. Right now we're using a Boston, an old Boston uh, spare piece. Okay. We surplus one of our own. So equipment-wise, we're good. Some of the things we, um, when I was sworn in as, as, as the chief, I spoke directly to the union and told them that one of the things I was really going to push for was state-of-the-art equipment for us and uh, that's what we're trying to do. Upgrade some of our rescue equipment, upgrade mm -hmm. our jaws. The, uh, when we talk about technology, uh, the new thing that's been out for a couple of years is battery-operated jaws of life. Um, no more hydraulic tools, they're all battery-operated really? and uh, a tr tremendous uh, improvement on the old equipment. Mm -hmm. Of course, they're very expensive, oh, yeah. so we're, we're trying yeah. to come up with the funding for that. That's good. Which brings me to the buildings that you're in, mm -hmm. <laughs> which were built maybe 120 years ago, something like that? The new one was built 120 years ago. <laughs> the new one. Um, one <laughs> which one was the newest one? I the said at the, the, the Shirley the Street beach. Station. So I said at the Fall Forum, um, we put a picture up on the screen of... I actually have the postcard. It says Winthrop's new fire station. It's from 1903. And technically, if you, it is still Winthrop's new fire station. It, uh, the center station was built in the late 1880s, 1890. Mm -hmm. Shirley Street Station, eight, uh, 1902 or three. Yeah. Um, what I try to get across to people when I tell them is you know, when there's a state of emergency, when everybody's told stay home, stay off the roads, don't go in unless you're essential personnel. Whether it's a natural disaster, whether it's flooding, whether it's a blizzard, whether it's a man-made incident, whether it's a pandemic, we don't have the option of staying home or not coming in. We, right. we go to work. Right. And we go to work in the two oldest buildings in town. Mm -hmm. They are in really tired condition. And when I first came on a little over 30 years ago, there was a recent study done by town meeting. They formulated a building study committee. Yeah. Um, 40 years ago, 45 years ago, the, the, these buildings were deemed long past their life cycle, long past their useful lifespan, and desperately needed to be replaced. Yeah. And not a lot's been done since then. Um, I brought up at the forum, they are, uh, they're not, handicapped accessible, they're not ADA compliant, mm -hmm. they're nowhere 
remotely close to being OSHA compliant, yeah. and there is absolutely no possibility that they could ever be OSHA compliant. And Massachusetts became an OSHA compliant state for the fire service in uh, 2020. And uh, they're not. We are. It's not possible for us to become OSHA compliant in those buildings. Well, I grew up on Irwin Street, and I mm -hmm. used to hang around the firehouse. Mm -hmm. I remember when the addition was put on, sure. and I remember some of the old timers. You know, the, yeah. uh, Paul Flanagan's dad, uh, Joe Pignato. Yeah. You remember Harry Canal, yeah, that course. group. And um, I remember as a kid going in there and going upstairs. And at that time, it looked like a you know pretty tough situation. He's old. But, um, but I must say, you guys have done a lot on your own. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the firefighters on their own in, you know, taking the time, put new windows in mm -hmm. and so forth, so. They have, they've, you know, know they've upda updated the bathrooms, uh, the kitchens have been updated, but there are things that we're not capable of doing. If you go to the Shirley Street Station, um, the slate roof leaks, yeah. and it leaks bad. Um, one of the things that we had to do when we talk about OSHA, OSHA, mandates that we have two sets of turnout gear for every member on the department. Mm -hmm. And not only do you have to have two sets, they have to be less than 10 years old. So two sets of turnout gear for, let's say, 35 guys um, is roughly $100,000. But we had to buy two sets, so that's almost $200,000. At the Shirley Street Station, they have tarps up, blue tarps to cover the lockers to keep the rainwater from pouring over there hundred thousand dollars worth of new turnout gear. Mm -hmm. We don't have any place to store it. OSHA says we're not allowed to store it on the main floor of the building on the same on the apparatus floor because of uh, cancer issues. Mm -hmm. um, we can't put it in the basement, we can't put it in the attic, we can't put it in, but we logistically we have nowhere else to store it. Um, well there's no doubt that you need new buildings. I, I know it's been on the drawing board at least the study has been was funded a while back, mm -hmm. and I know there were, you know, people every once in a while, they'll, they'll say, what, what's going on with the, the public safety building? Is mm -hmm. there a study being done? So I know there was one uh, presented, mm -hmm. you know, at the fall forum, and uh, I thought we would, for the folks that weren't there or didn't watch it, I thought we might highlight some of it mm -hmm. today. So let's take a look at this. This is, these are conceptual designs of where a new combined public safety building would go. And there are all different types of options that you'll, you'll, we'll be talking about. Some of them are just a fire department and some mm -hmm. of them are just a police station or whatever. But the whole like, concept is to, to bring everything together in one building, police and fire, all the vehicles associated with it and, mm -hmm. and, and so forth. So let's take a look at the first slide. Um, this is just a little introduction. Let's see if we can go to maybe a, a conceptual design and a location. So this was how this was the matrix that they used to score the locations in town. Okay. So they started with an overview of the town, and they had a design. And they, this was Castle Booz was the architect, and they have a long history of designing buildings like this. So they were aware of they know what the square footage required, the minimum square footage for a public safety building, and they came up with a few sites in town that either we owned, whether it was already town-owned land or the town had the possibility of purchasing or acquiring where the buildings would fit, and they put a series of scores together from zero to five and came up with what would be the most um, advantageous, the most feasible spot in town. So they, they have to take in, in, into consideration, uh, more importantly, the location. If it's one central firehouse, mm -hmm. then it's gonna serve the entire mm -hmm. town equally. It does, NFPA standards say that you're supposed to respond within four minutes. So in a town this size, we could basically respond just about anywhere within that four minutes. Span. Okay. So, um, of course, being a peninsula, um, flood zones become an issue. Right. Where, where's a good spot? Where's not a good spot? What's um, uh, town-owned land, obviously, would be beneficial. That would be the first thing. All right. So let's take a look at that next slide. Uh, so this is Veterans Road, the Little League Field. A single phase option, what does that mean? Single phase means that they build the police station, fire station, public safety building at one time. Okay. So at the one point they talk about phased construction where they would build, they deem the need for the fire station right now exceeds the need for the police station. So they'd say, okay, well let's build the fire station first 
and then maybe wait a couple of, come, a couple of years, come back and build the police station. Now, an extension to the current in, fire station. In other words, it would be the same location? No. Th oh. This would be as if they were going to build it at the A field, at oh, the Little. Okay. So they would so be, you'll would see, be... this. the single phase construction is they build a public safety building from start to finish, combination police and fire. Okay. Single phase would be we build a fire station and then come back and attach the police station to the existing okay. fire station. All right. Next slide. Okay. So this is, this is an aerial view or shot of the new field. Mm -hmm. And as I see it, I'm not a golfer, so you'll have to explain what <laughs> hole that is. So it is between the golf course and Miller Field. Um, okay. it, is, it sits right on top of the Little League field. Um, there are now any any opinion I give as to whether or not I think this is a. Oh, I see. A, a, this this is where the Little League field currently correct. is. Exactly. So Bolsters is on the other side on Veterans. On Road. the other side, above okay. where probably right about where it says the P in phase. Okay. So. Um, that's right in the bend on Veterans Road. So any opinion I would give on this is strictly my own opinion. I don't speak for the council. I don't speak for the, um, the police department or mm -hmm. this is just my opinion. Uh, I have, and I know DPW, the director Calla has some concerns about this location as well. Um, this would have to be significantly raised below, it's, it's currently below the flood zone. Just like Miller Field was brought up substantially right. high, right. the Little League Field would have to be brought up substantially high. Um, I thought, if, I could be mistaken, four to five feet in order to bring it up out of the flood zone. Okay. So this apparatus bay, mm -hmm. so the, the apparatus could exit the firehouse mm -hmm. either from either side? Correct. Okay. So they would, in, in that scenario, right now, engine one, covers the Shirley Street area, Point Shirley. That's so that would be on this side? That would be the side facing Veterans Road. Okay. And the apparatus bay. And Engine 2 covers the Center District, the, the Mays area, the uh, Main Street area. So that would face the high school, which the high school would be in the bottom right of that okay. point of the All picture. Right. And where you see Sally Port, that's the police side? That would be the police side. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, next slide. These are just... In, in, so floor plans, the red side would be the fire station, the blue side would be the police station, the yellow side um, would be common area, and I believe the green is uh, shared training space. Okay, next. And this, because of the somewhat limited square footage of it, Veterans Road side would be a three-story building. Okay. So that would have been it from Cross Street? Looking that would have been, it? you were looking at it from Cross Street. Yes, okay. that's from the Cross Street side. Okay, next. <clears throat> okay, cost. So, and I, you know, that's something that people, that the, that, the, that the voters of Winthrop will have to face, irregardless of where the decision is made to put it, whether it be on some of the sites we're going to see, or even down the center, um, it'll have to go to a debt exclusion. Correct. Now my, again, my own, this is just my personal opinion on this. I am a big advocate of, as you just said, it's up to the taxpayers. Then we need to put this to the taxpayers. We give them options. Mm -hmm. This is option A and this is how much it's going to cost. This is option B and this is how much it's going to cost. And option C might be nothing. We're not, we don't want to fund a project like this, in which case we'll live with their decision. Um, Going back, we started to, we talked a few minutes ago about 30 years ago, there was a uh, committee put together to build the building. Had they spent three or four million dollars 30 years ago, we wouldn't be in this position. Right. We'd still be working in a nice building and everything would be fine. Right. If you don't spend, in this case, 37, almost 38 million dollars, um, you're not going to outrun this. This right. is not going away. It won't be $38 million, it'll be $48 million. And if it's not 48, it'll be 58. Right. Um, at some point, it's going to happen. Right. It's going to have to happen. And I would say it's kind of well overdue. It is long overdue. And, you know, uh, do we have any money? Did we get any money at all from the state? There is, there is money earmarked at the state uh, to help pay for a public $10 million, safety I building. Think. I believe it is $10 million. Yeah, that's what I thought. I think to the, help defer the, speaker the cost. The speaker was responsible for that some years ago. For us, yes. Okay. Next. Next. 
Now, the, the phased construction would be, again, uh, phase one is the fire station. And okay. you'll see, you'll see uh, as we move through the slides, significant added cost to doing phased construction. So that was $37, uh, $37 million for single okay. phase construction. Next. Again, that would be a floor plan of the phased construction. Okay, next. And that's what it would look like without the police station on the right-hand side, that's fire station only. Mm -hmm. Next. And if it were you, if you were to build now, it was 37 for a public safety building. That's phase one, fire station only, 24,100,000. Um, yep. So, again, you pay me now or you pay me later. It, exactly. You know? Exactly. Okay, next. And that's the addition of the phase two, putting the police station on it. Exactly. That would be bringing the... Fire, uh, the police station onto the existing new fire station. Okay. So that would be phase two, and you'll see the additional cost. So remember that it was 37 million total for right. single phase construction. So that would be the blue areas, obviously the hashed areas, that would be the police station added to the existing fire. Okay. Next. And that's what it would look like. Next. So this is, so is this just the police station? That would be phase two, would be 20, almost $23 million by itself. So now you're up to like 40 something. Okay, now I believe the next slide breaks it down. Okay, next. So it's a little tough to see. Um, yeah, $47 million. Yeah. If you wait, do versus, one now. And versus do, 37. Yeah. It's, it's 10 million, because you have to remember, they have to bring all of the infrastructure in, they have to bring all yeah. the equipment in, instead of doing it just once. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. They have to do it in, in two stages. Okay. Next. So it's significantly more expensive. Okay, this is, the, that was the one I thought we had originally, but I was looking at it differently. So let's go to the next slide. This is uh, the seventh hole uh, of the golf course. Right, so this is at Cross Street. Um, if you're at Cross and River, um, that area is already, for all intents and purposes, out of the flood zone. Um, it would have to be built up a little bit, and a little bit being a foot to maybe 18 inches, mm -hmm. was my understanding. This is a much bigger footprint. It's a much bigger square footage area. As you see, it has a, um, this has the gun range in the back for the yep. police department to, for their qualifications. And this, because of the square footage of the lot, would be a two-story building, not a three-story building. Okay. Next. Again, similar, red's fire, blue is police, okay. and the yellow would be shared. That would be, that is a possible artist rendering of what it could look like. Okay, again, that's Cross Street looking. That would be Cross Street, yes. Okay, next. And that, in single phase, all in, one, one construction project for a public safety building is just under $46 million. Okay, all right, next. And again, this goes back to phase, phase construction. construction. Would do it in, sta in stages. The fire station first. Yep. Next. Again, all the reds, the fire station, and that would be twenty-four million, one sixty. Next. And that to the right-hand side is the second phase of the construction. That would be huge. bringing the police station in. Yeah, that's pretty huge too. An area. It is. It's a it's a a big footprint yep. um, with some associated challenges and costs that come with it. Next, so this would be phase two. Yep, that's rendering. phase two with the police station on the side. And the cost, an additional $29 and million. Dollars. In phase Almost two. Almost 30 million. Yeah, so again, significantly yep. more expensive to do it in two phases versus one. $53 million. Mm -hmm. Okay, next, now how many options do we have? Right now, there are those two. Okay. Those are the two sites that are being addressed. Um, at the fall forum, the issue was brought up again about potentially using the old middle school site on Pauline Street. Um, one of the interesting proposals that was brought up by the, um, the manager was incorporating not only police and fire, but bringing public health into the same building, giving Parks and Rec a legitimate Yep. real space of their own to operate out of, right. keeping the rink, mm -hmm. so the rink, you know, for anybody who's nervous about us losing the rink, that's not going not to happen, mm -hmm. but it brings a real central location and a central facility for the town, right. uh, to, for, for all of us to operate out of. Um, 
right now in the event, like early stages of the pandemic, you obviously have the police headquarters, you have the fire headquarters, emergency operations center in the basement of the old Legion Hall. Mm -hmm. Really not the best place for that yeah, either. Everything's all fractured so up. Everything is spread out around the town. Right. In one central location, in, you know, like we said before at the beginning, it's been 140 years, 130 years since the center fire station was built. A building like this could serve the community for the next 100 years. Mm -hmm. If it was police, fire, some EMS, we may, you know, there was, a, there was talk about having a bay in there to run the ambulance crew out of, so they're operating out of our facility as well. Having public health work out of the same building, having the emergency operations center out of the same building, shared community space, the community can come in and use the auditorium type um, training facilities. Centrally People, located. Centrally located on property that the town already owns. Um, Interesting. There are a lot of pluses to it. Um, Unfortunately, in a town this size, we do not have a lot of options land-wise, mm -hmm. especially for stuff that we already own. Right. Um, there are significant associated costs with the golf club site, some conservation challenges with moving a drainage ditch. Sure. Um, one of the issues that I personally have with the Little League field, um, it has to be built up really high. So it's got to be built up another six feet. Mm -hmm. If you buy, if you follow the talk about catastrophic flooding in the area. We have had some catastrophic flooding, some big storms, rising sea tides. While we would be high and dry in the fire station, public safety building, well, we might be on an island. <laughs> How do we get out to serve the people of the community? Right. If we're up high out of the flood zone, but nobody else is. Right. Are, there, are there any cost in all of this to let's say in the case of the, where the Little League field is located, mm -hmm. to relocate the Little League field? That was not, it, that was not included in the 38 okay. I mean, that's a big, dollars. that's a big deal in this community. It very, is. Very, very active uh, mm -hmm. Little League program. Uh, and the same thing with the golf course. What, what would happen with the golf course if you were to take that seventh hole? I would assume you would have to rejig. Yeah. Well, you can't have an eight-hole golf course. Yeah. <laughs> so they would have to, there was talk of, um, Shortening some of the holes, maybe making it what we think you know is, is often referred to as an executive type golf course. So instead of having um, the par fours, the par fives that are on the course, you shrink the course a little bit. Maybe you have seven par threes, mm -hmm. a par four, and a par five. So you shrink the course a little bit. It, it would certainly take some redesigning of the golf course, and those costs were not associated in the estimates either. Yeah. So there were some significant costs there. And anything you do with having been on the uh, the uh, the committee for the Miller Field, you know, mm -hmm. redo. Uh, we ran into all types of situations w dealing with the state. Anytime you do any work at all in a, in a, in a, in a marsh area, which that is considered, mm -hmm. uh, you have to make up for it someplace else. Right. There's a cost into it. And then there's all type of permitting that mm -hmm. goes on. Could go on for a couple of years. It could take years. So there, was, um, there was another proposal that was initially put forward to take the existing fire station on Pauline Street, the existing police station in Metcalf Square, and combine the two. Yeah, I remember Taking a couple that. of pieces of property by eminent domain, yeah. going back on Burrell Terrace, and, and purchasing a couple of homes on Burrell Terrace. Yeah. But, you know, one of the issues that comes up is not only the eminent domain issue, it's the purchasing the property, there's an added cost in that. Um, it's the legal issues if one or more re uh, of the owners hold out Mm -hmm. and it can take a, a protracted period of time. Mm -hmm. And the other biggest concern for me was, uh, where are we supposed to work out of while all this construction <laughs> is going on? We can't, we don't have anywhere else yeah. to go. Yeah. And at one, you know, people would say, well, I've heard some people say, well, you could work out of trailers, except we don't have enough land to put a trailer. No. No. We can't. No. Um, you know, I, th I think the, you know, the, the site, the old middle school site, in many respects, makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. uh, there are those that you know are looking to that area to generate additional revenue for the town because we are always revenue short, mm -hmm. revenue neutral, or mm -hmm. mostly short. Um, I would think that if that that place was you know that location was selected, I mean you still have two old firehouses that could be sold and a police station and a police station many of which can be converted into, especially the old fire station, mm -hmm. they could come back and, and restore that and make mm -hmm. it 
It could be either a restaurant or it sure. could be a couple of condo well, units. There's, um, you know. I don't know if the name escapes me, but there's one over in Chelsea yeah, that they renovated. Right. They did a terrific yeah. job in there. It's a restaurant. I've seen, yeah. um, I lived in Swampscott for a, a long time. They took um, a fire station in Swampscott and converted it into magnificent condominiums. Mm -hmm. I've seen one in Beverly where yeah. it's mixed use. It's a restaurant on the first floor and condominiums on mm -hmm. the second floor. And that's two fire stations yep. and a police, police station. station. So there is some revenue that could be gained. Well, Scott, we covered a lot of territory. We're, you know, we're up against the clock. Um, I've been trying to keep time here. But listen, I, I really appreciate you coming in, uh, introducing yourself to the, the town of Winthrop mm -hmm. officially, mm -hmm. and going over the proposals that are on the table for a public safety building. Hopefully things will work out. Uh, we'll get some support from, from, the, reg from the voters mm -hmm. when it comes to that. One of the things I, I started by saying, I'm a huge proponent of putting this to the taxpayers. Exactly. They're the ones who are going to foot the bill for it. Yep. And once this, if this is in the hands of the council right now, mm -hmm. if and when they decide that this is going to go to a vote, and we hope to put it on a spring ballot, um, I am all in favor of opening the fire stations to the public. And yep. Come on in and see what you're putting the paddles to every month and keeping these places alive there. I think what we might do is we might bring a, a film crew in. Come on in. And we'll get We'd a, love a to tour and then we'll show it. We'd love to have okay. it. Okay. All right. Thanks again. You're welcome. We've been with Scott Wiley, the new police, uh, police chief, fire chief in the <laughs> town of Winthrop. Uh, this has been Community Forum. Until next time, my name is Ron Vecchia. See you then.